X8 has just launched into open beta today. It's looking to be the Valorant of VR and already day one of open beta, it's delivering. This is a 5v5 hero-based shooter currently with six different heroes you can choose from to play on your team. Whether you are attacking or defending, you are pushing into your enemy's territory, turrets, tripwires, smoke, all kinds of different ways you can approach this game. And I've got to say, the first thing that struck me when you get in, the graphics actually look really good. The game is too new to have a lot of ratings. There's only two five-star ratings so far on the Oculus store but over on steam we've actually got some written reviews all so far are recommend from the early access players saying high potential better than pavlov if you're a fan of valorant or counter-strike you're gonna enjoy this game and people saying the devs in the discord are really active x8 is a game i would say pause the video go get it downloading on your headset right now if you're into these kind of games because you're gonna have a blast trying this out and there's tons of people in the lobby i didn't have to wait at all to get in the game today hexaverse adventures is a game that really surprised me this just came out about a week ago on apple lab in this game you're dropped in on a little tiny island there's a sword you pick up and you quickly start hacking away at objects around you and this collects resources then as you get these resources you can continue to expand this island out and you discover new biomes enemies and secrets being out for such a short amount of time there's only five ratings four of them are five star and one is four star but no written reviews yet on oculus over on side quest there was a couple of reviews and i really have to echo gulana's review here they said at first it seems like it's boring but after a few moments you start to get into the game so much that you don't want to stop I got in at first when I was trying this out and I was ready to give up. But as I started to see these new biomes take shape, these enemies, this island environment grow, I kept wanting to play. There's some weird addictive quality to this game. That said, this is very early. Right now, you only have a sword where it feels like you should have a pickaxe or a hammer for some of the things you're breaking. And they said this first level is to showcase their concept and provide a glimpse into the expansive universe they plan to develop. I will say with how much fun I'm having even just playing this version, I will be watching for more. You can get Nano Force completely free on Quest 2 right now because it's an early alpha and this game is seriously splatoon but in vr you end up in your own private room you've got different avatars to choose from different weapons to choose from and it is a very early build but it's very promising already but so far it's new enough and little known enough it's only got 16 ratings but still about a 4.7 rating 74 percent of those are five stars and just 13 percent four and three people saying things like great game it's splatoon it's really fun but people saying it's obviously early alpha it still needs work it's got promise but it's got a long ways to go i will will caution you if you are not used to a lot of motion in VR this game may be a bit much for you because you can paint the floors with paint you can paint the walls the buildings and then you can duck down into that paint and move really fast move up buildings jump around it's really cool but it's definitely for people who've got their VR legs home detective is actually a really neat concept this is an augmented reality game that uses the pass-through on the quest to allow you to play a detective in your own play space and that's actually the premise of the game you work from home as a detective and you use your AR glasses in the game to bring in elements from the crime scene, reconstruct them, and try and figure out the crimes. The game's only been out for about a week and has eight ratings so far. 75% five stars, 25% four stars. People saying they love it, but they want more levels. They want it to be co-op. It's an amazing pass-through detective game. It's a really cool concept to see how AR is being used more and more. And the upcoming Quest 3 is supposed to have that same color pass-through the Quest Pro has. So a game like this where you can use your controllers or actual hand tracking to play in your home space, it's really cool. One of the games on this list that I came across that I am the most excited for is called decommission and it looks like a much more realistic version of among us vr you find yourselves in a space station on mars the space station is about to explode and you and the other people have to try and save the station there is however a mole this has up to eight players it has hand tracking or controllers it uses your eye tracking if you have a quest pro now for now this seems to be more of an open source project made for quest developers although it was something i was able to get into even on my own and check out but if you had a crew of eight people to fully play and understand this experience it looks like it could be a lot of fun but you got to have a crew of people to play it and with that it's only got six ratings at two and a half stars mostly negative reviews that have been written so far either saying it doesn't load looks like it's going to be an among us vr ripoff or people saying they're interested in it but they weren't able to get enough people in to play it and see what it's like stack is a vr game i can't believe i hadn't heard of yet this is currently beta content but it is one of the best graphical designed games that we've seen yet stack is a vr multiplayer 
game where you are dashing through post-apocalyptic environments and you are using your disc and bouncing it to try and eliminate your opponents. There's duels, there's teams, and this is for people who like fast-paced sports games. There's even different modes. 1v1, deathmatch, team deathmatch, capture the flag, a control point setup, and of course there is things like unlockable cosmetics, season passes, really familiar with these type of games. With 73 ratings instead of about a 4.4, this game has only been out since December. 71% five-star ratings. People saying they were surprised. This is an awesome game. It's really good. People really loving it, but leaving notes to the developer in the reviews, which the developer seems to respond to most of them. But this is a game that I feel like needs more exposure. Now you'd assume we have to have full body tracking and foot tracking to have a football or soccer game, as it's called here. But VRFS is a free football soccer simulator that uses the controller sticks to move, but then your hands acting as the feet to kick the ball. Using realistic physics based off of how you're moving those controllers as to what part of your foot hits the ball, how hard you hit it, what direction you hit it. People are saying this is actually a really good simulator. It is very new, so it does still have a few bugs, but it's got a nearly four and a half star rating with people saying, awesome, amazing. They're very excited to see the future of it and the developer responding to comments already. If you're into soccer or football, <laughs> this is something to check out. If you've dreamed of snowboarding in VR, Slope is a way to do it for free and early access right now on the Quest. It's a little bit of an unusual control style. Either of your controllers becomes your two feet on the snowboard and then you use that to then fly it down the mountain. I actually got fed up with trying to figure out the control style like that and I just strapped my controllers directly to my feet and I had an absolute blast trying to play this way. It's obvious the game isn't meant to be played this way. You can't quite put the pressure down you need to on either side of the board. It just came out on April 18th and it's currently sitting at a 4.3 rating. 78% of that is five stars saying it's a great game for snowboarders. You must play. You're going to love it. And some lower reviews saying that the game didn't work for them. Didn't work on Quest 1. They couldn't figure out how to snowboard. I will say the first time I try to open it, there's a screen right in the beginning that warns you. This is an early build. It's going to change a lot. There will be bugs and glitches. Gym Class Basketball VR has nearly a five star rating. Gym Class calls itself the top VR basketball simulator known for its fitness benefits, the fact that it's free, and the fact that you can play multiplayer games with your friends. It even has dunking in it. Now there is a free version and there is a premium version, which you can actually have your own private courts. You can personalize your avatar, but even the free version still includes multiplayer modes, bot modes, matchmaking. Definitely worth checking out while it's free. Divine Duel only released about two months ago and already has 542 ratings. This is a tactical fighting game, almost like a deity simulator where you are not only fighting your opponent, but there's also layers of real time strategy where you are summoning your followers to help them attack mythical creatures and even elemental weapons like asteroids. You choose what type of celestial you're going to be and use all different kinds of weapons against them, even dragons. This has you moving physically around inside your play space, dodging attacks and fighting back and looks like a lot of game to currently be free with a 4.9 rating. This game has tons of five star rings, 94% of them are saying it's the very best. You got to try it. Favorite game for a lot of people now. And with very few 1% one star rings, people are saying things like it gets repetitive. They feel like they're playing the same battle over and over. But for the most part, everyone loves this game. There are going to be links in the description to all the games and in the comment pinned down below as well. In another dueling style game, Aliens and Heroes puts you in different heroes bodies from different times that aliens have captured and put into capsules and then pitted against each other for their entertainment. You're stuck on a moving platform that is approaching another moving platform of your enemy and potentially online multiplayer. And there's all kinds of equipment for you to try and kill each other. If you don't take each other out before your platforms touch, all your equipment stops being useful and you just have to punch, fight, and dodge against each other. There's even different unlockable skills that can help you out. And this game has not been out long, but has got six ratings, all of which are five stars. A perfect 100% rating, yet zero written reviews. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Blacktop Hoops VR Basketball. A streetball inspired multiplayer VR basketball game. This allows you to string together tricks, dunks, and play with people all around the world. They advertise this game was built to have the most realistic basketball mechanics alongside dynamic AI where they used actual motion capture animations from actual street ballers. With a nearly five star rating and over 5,500 ratings, this game actually has very few low ratings. With any free game, people do tend to rate them a little higher because they didn't have to pay for it, but countless reviews say that this game is 
fantastic, has great dynamics, but when you go into those multiplayer games, you might be really good or you might really stink when you play against actual other people. Downhill Bike is a game that just reminds me how much I want there to be a Happy Wheels VR. In Downhill Bike, your two controllers become the handlebars of your bike. Weirdly, you turn those with your actual hands, but to move forward, you still have to push on the analog stick on one of your controllers and you can race at high speeds downhill. There's a helmet that you can toggle on and off to help you prevent motion sickness, but this game does not hold your hand without that helmet on when it comes to how far you can launch the bike, how much it'll spin out of control. The game has only been out since May 5th, has five ratings so far. Three of those are five stars, one four star, and one one star, but the only person that left an actual written review said to buy this game. Although, you buy it for free. AMXR is a 5v5 fast-paced multiplayer shooter. You can play online, of course it also has bots, and you can even play with users on the same Wi-Fi network. This game has a 4.2 rating with over 600 ratings, so this is a bit more of a well-known game. With 66% five-star rating, some people are saying they're gonna replace Pavlov with this. It's amazing, it's really good. And some of the negative reviews saying that it's just not the game they want, they said it sucked, there was server issues, or people saying that now it's finally free, but that it was a little too late and they're still isn't enough people in the lobby to really enjoy this game. Grab is a multiplayer parkour game. It's got climbing, jumping, sliding, and swinging mechanics where you're trying to race through levels to the end but not fall in the lava. It also has a level editor where you can make your own levels and then play them with up to 10 people in cross-platform multiplayer. This is considered an early access, but it's already got over 2,200 ratings, giving it about a 4.8 total. Now, although this is parkour using your hands to bounce around, people in the reviews even saying, it's not great tag, but that it's a great parkour game, it's really fun, they love the editor, and some of the lower ratings are people saying that there's too many kids or that they got banned from the game, people come back at them, but 88% 5 star ratings, definitely a well liked game. Population 1 has been out in VR for a few years, it just went free to play. If you don't know Population 1 already, it's often compared to a VR version of Fortnite, because it's a battle royale game where you can squad up, you've got building mechanics, but unlike Fortnite, you've got all kinds of climbing and VR specific mechanics. Mechanics too. In the game, when you need to heal, you grab a banana, you peel that banana, and you eat that to heal. When you come into the game, you can either ride a jet pot in, or you can hold your arms up to glide off of the wall that you've been on. You can grab the ground, even pull yourself down behind some kind of cover and shoot. The game is definitely one of the most popular battle royale type games on any VR headset at this point. The game has almost 12,000 ratings, although it's about a 4.3. Some of those recent reviews have actually been dragging it down a bit. The game went free to play, and people are like, hey, can I get a refund? Or, oh, I bought this a while back, but now it's free and I feel sad about that. They did offer out a lot of cosmetic packages and things to people who had already bought it. Do you remember the days of Rock Band? Well, what if you could be in a virtual band playing in all corners of the universe? Band Space has you doing that and it's a co-op VR rhythm game. Whether you're playing the drums, the guitar, keyboard, or even the bass, you're playing all over the universe, different planets, looking up into space. This game is currently in early access, but it does include two scenes, Cyberpunk and Apocalypse, with different scenes coming, including concert, desert, and more. Only 10 ratings so far. This game doesn't seem to be very well known. It came out just on April 24th, so it has not been out long. 4.1 rating so far, 70% five-star ratings, but 20% one-star ratings. Five-star ratings saying it's worth it, huge potential, it's a great game, their dream game. One star saying that sometimes the updates mess it up, other things in the game aren't working, they can't get past certain stages. Keep in mind this is in early access, so glitches are expected there, but for free and for all this game, is trying to do, it's definitely worth checking out. Vertical Shift has actually been suggested by several of you to make it on one of our lists, and after checking out, I see why. With 134 ratings, putting this at about a 4.3 rating, this at first glance will look like a Spider-Man cyberpunk simulator, although you will see gliding through the city, shooting a, what looks like a web from building to building. There's also jetpacks and gliders. There's all kinds of different ways to control your movement through flight. Couple that with the fact that there's four multiplayer modes with up to 10 people playing together. Freeze tag, hot seat, infection, racing, different modes where you have to try and distract cops, free prisoners, and all kinds of stuff to vertical shift that really does make this a pretty involved game for being free. 78% of those are five star reviews, 13% one star reviews from different things to saying glitching, screaming kids, can't play the game because of height requirements. The developer has responded to just about every single low review. Gods of Gravity has over a 4.5 star rating. It is considered a social arcade 
arcade-style real-time strategy game. You compete in a showdown as a deity, but unlike other deity simulators, this is actually a multiplayer experience for two to eight people. You're trying to eliminate your opponents, you're trying to take over the entire solar system with the command of your fleet. You can also team up with friends and go against bots, and there is built-in spatial voice chat. The game also does have a single-player campaign. A lot of extremely positive reviews, people saying you've got to try this, people saying that they can't believe that this game is free. Piano Vision is an augmented reality app designed to help teach you to play the piano. You actually see your physical hands and keyboard through the cameras on your Quest 2, and your keyboard can even potentially be connected directly to the Quest 2 headset through a USB cable. Compared in the reviews to other keyboard apps like Virtuous on the Quest 2, many people have said that this is actually the best app for learning to play the piano or keyboard. Backrooms VR, which is kind of a ripoff of Noclip VR, which is a ripoff of Escape the Backrooms, actually has a 4.4 rating with 234 ratings. They say this is a smallish Backrooms VR game that uses the Gorilla Tech locomotion. They even say in the description, because they were too lazy to write their own locomotion. We are exploring the Backrooms level 0, 1, the pool rooms, and of course there's entities like most Backrooms games. Mostly positive reviews, 74% five star reviews, people saying it's really fun, it's awesome, it's good. And with very few lower reviews, most of them are citing glitches or issues in the game. Now I don't recommend too many games that are on side quest because of the degree of difficulty that it takes to add them onto your quest versus something like App Lab where you literally can just one click on your phone and it'll show up in your library. But Attack on Quest is worth the trouble. Based of course on the popular manga show Attack on Titan, Attack on Quest is a simulator that is looking to put you in that world and take down titans. This game has a 4.5 rating on side quest with over a million clicks, almost 2 million views. This is one of the most well-known side quest games to date. A lot of reviews saying that it just needs to be on App Lab and that's the most important thing that people have said is rated intense because of a lot of movement. Make sure you've got your VR legs if you're considering jumping into this one. If you are looking for a great soccer simulator for VR, there's another soccer game we found that's free on Quest, Final Soccer. Now this is more of a goalie simulator, but it has a whole bunch of different features. They advertise got over 150 levels, realistic graphics and animations actually captured by professional players' movements. The thing that I found most interesting about this is there is a multiplayer VR versus mobile mode where you and VR can be the goalie, everybody else can be playing on their smartphones, taking penalty kick shots, and it sounds like a good way to set up a little party game. They say that the game can be played in a small room due to the movement assistance system, but they recommend three meters would be a lot better so you can really just run side to side, cover all those goals. With 73 ratings, putting this at about a 4.4 rating, a lot of the ratings are five stars, 72% of them. Some of the lower reviews are dragging it down saying it needs more content, it needs more modes, or of course saying they didn't have enough room to play it or it can be dangerous to let kids play it in a small room because they're not gonna pay attention to their surroundings. Final Soccer also has a purchasable pro mode, although some of the reviews have said that they weren't able to purchase that, but so the developer's response in some reviews even said that if enough people purchase this or this gives enough attention on Oculus, they're planning to add those other modes people were hoping for. Monkey See, Monkey Doo Doo has been in closed beta and is now available for the public to download for free. At first glance, this might look similar to Gorilla Tag, but this is a very different kind of game that pits you and your friends as monkeys racing against each other to try and collect bananas, whether you're climbing up and jumping off of trees, swinging on vines, bouncing off of lily pads and trying not to get eaten by the crocodile, it's a very fast paced game that then has rewards that you can use to buy new cosmetics, you can customize your monkey, and in the lobby you can have a whole bunch of players hanging out together just having fun and then going into matches with up to six people total racing to get the first bananas. Blast On is described as a fast paced PvP shooter. It has you dueling against another person in a slow motion bullet hell type game. This game requires some play space for sure. You are physically trying to dodge all the attacks that your opponent is shooting or throwing at you, and they've even recently added a mixed reality mode so you can see that play space around you and help give you more space and room to play. With a 4.5 rating, a very high rating, there is some people giving it lower ratings because they were upset that they originally paid for the game and then it went free after and they gave them currency in the game or something to make up for that. Gun Raiders is a free-to-play VR shooter with tons of different game modes between new battle royale, assault, control, and a bunch of others. This game has high-flying combat action that has you flying all over the map. There's climbing mechanics 
tons of different guns that you go through. The game has a 4.1 rating with most of the lower reviews citing community issues, report buttons not necessarily working when there was a toxic player. We've got Tower Tag. Tower Tag is described as a hyperdynamic futuristic paintball-like PvP shooter. You have a grappling hook locomotion so you grapple your way from tower to tower but the interesting thing is you have to defend yourself by ducking behind this tower and shooting around it at friends. With a 4.5 rating only 75 ratings so far most reviews are positive 81% 5 stars. Now the reviews do really vary here though. Some people saying it's great some people saying it's glitchy some reviews even suggesting that they push people to give them the good five star reviews and that's what's helped i know i tried this personally years ago on steam and it was a cool game if you got in with just your friends and played but between the lobbies not having enough people and the gameplay getting repetitive i did find it kind of boring over time i would definitely recommend if you do want to try this game either join their discord or find a group of people you already know online and use this just as a fun way to hang out with your friends platformer prototype is a vr obstacle course where you are walking on your hands pushing yourself through an obstacle course. It's only got 21 ratings, so this doesn't seem to be nearly as well known of a game, and those ratings are a little mixed. 61% 5 stars and only 10% 1 star. People are saying this game is amazing. Other people are saying the gravity isn't good because you can't wall climb or pinch climb. I mean, in real gravity, I feel like wall climbing is pretty hard. Pioneer Endless Journey was actually created by B Haptics, the company that makes the most popular haptic vest that's used in VR, Quest 2, PC, and hopefully someday PSVR 2 compatible. Pioneer Endless journey is a first person shooter roguelike game where you're up on a floating island in the sky. You're collecting and combining weapon parts, making different combinations. Some combinations work great together, some combinations wreck each other, and you have to learn that throughout the game. Like most roguelike games, this has you repeating and retrying the game throughout. 98 ratings give this about a 4.7 rating. 5 stars are 77% of those, 22% are 4 star, and only 1% are 3 stars. Beyond that, there's no 2 or 1 stars. This game seems to be immensely liked by everyone who's tried it, yet with the smaller number of reviews, it doesn't seem like a lot of people know about this game yet. Wadality is one of the highest rated games on today's list with about a 4.9 rating and 264 ratings. This is a multiplayer VR shooter that has a unique style where you are moving vertically up through the level. The game has received multiple updates now and has 87% 5 star rating, 9% 4 stars, and only 2% 1 star. And if you go look for those 2% 1 star ratings, one of them even said it's a very good game. And then a couple other citing glitches. Seems like one of those games, although it's still newer on App Lab, it is somewhat well known with the number of ratings it has, but it's definitely something that looks unique and not like just another clone. With a nearly perfect rating, Maestro the Masterclass is a free simulator that will make you a conductor of an orchestra. Utilizing actual hand tracking, it says to use just your hands or even grab a chopstick to get the real motion down. This is going to put you on the podium and make you an orchestra conductor. Surprisingly, with 226 ratings, this has zero, one, two, or even three stars. People giving all kinds of props to the developers in here, saying that even if this was paid and they knew about it, they would gladly pay for this. Also, people citing in reviews that the hand tracking works surprisingly well in this. If you remember Rock Band and you liked playing the drums on it, we've got Drum Legend in VR now. This game has been out for about two weeks on App Lab. Got about a 3.4 right now with pretty split reviews. Five stars making up 40%, three stars making up 40%, and one star making up 20%. People are saying it's simple and enjoyable, it's fun, they're liking it, but people saying that it's too easy, it needs more songs, obviously has a lot more development ahead of it. But you've just basically got drums in front of you in different colors, the tracks playing, and you are hitting these drums to the beat of the music. Flipside Studio is a virtual production app. Now, although this is considered a semi-professional production studio in VR, it's already being used for people to get together and hang out, make comedic sketches, or of course actually collaborate and make VR movies together. The game has a lot of really interesting mechanics. It's got props, it's got lighting, it's got different camera angles that you can use to really make pretty professional looking productions as far as virtual reality productions go. You can also go in and play a character, record that, and then go back and play a different character. So if you're doing this alone, you can play multiple parts or of course bring your friends in and just throw props at each other and have fun. It hasn't been out long, so it's got 35 ratings with about a 4.2 rating with some of those reviews dragging it down saying that this was in beta for a while now and even though it's fully launched, there really isn't anything new or different or that VR chat kind of has the same capabilities but a lot of really positive reviews talking about how this really opens up possibilities for movie making and the developer seems to respond to pretty much every review but another cool option there is actually a flip side studio app where you can even create your own avatars and props too. Cactus Cowboy Plants at War. It's a World War II themed VR story with a good sense of 
of humor built into it and a very high rating. 273 ratings have this at about 4.7. 90% of those are five stars. With lower reviews, just people saying that it's overrated or that they had some bugs. But this game has been out for just about a year now. Although if you are someone who got a PSVR 2 and you want to check it out, Cactus Cowboy's on there too. Solicitude Wake Up has you awakening in an abandoned research facility lying down on an operating table. You have to find your way out of the facility. You hear voices, you find monsters around every corner, and you only have a flashlight that has a limited amount of battery. You're searching this facility, trying to find more batteries to keep that flashlight working, and then you are trying to find key cards to get through this. Now, this has a four-star rating with only 16 ratings. This seems to be a game that is not very well known, but some of the reviews are extremely positive, saying it's really scary, it's really good. Others citing that it's just too dark. It needs a little bit more brightness to be able to see what you're doing, and there needs to be some other mechanics added to where maybe your flashlight recharges some when you die, because if you die and your flashlight's low and you can't make it to find another battery, you're basically effed. Fight Back is an action game on Quest 2 that uses hand tracking to do the actual fighting. This game is created by Celine Tricart, who we actually had on the podcast and interviewed recently. Although this game looks like an action game on the surface, it's actually using tenets of self-defense in the game and teaching you some of these techniques as you play the game. As a creature of light, you've noticed that other stars are going missing and you have to go take on the shadows to try and help save them. The game is just launched, so it doesn't have any reviews yet, but it looks really interesting and it actually was in the competition at the 2022 Venice Film Festival, where we were told it had a really positive reception. People really liked it, especially because using hand tracking was really simple for new people to approach it. No Clip VR gets compared to a proper back rooms VR style game. Claims it is a fantasy violence with mild blood, yet it is repeatedly called a full on horror game. It uses a unique locomotion style where you have to move your arms to explore humongous spaces. There's different puzzles, entities you're trying to escape from, and it warns if you're not careful and no clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you're gonna end up in the back rooms. Millions of square feet of back rooms to try and get out of. This game has about a 4.7 rating and most any review that isn't a five star seems to be all of their older reviews with some people saying they want to see more levels, more added to the game. Seems like everyone who's had the game work fine gives it a five star rating, which is really impressive. Luna Episode 1 Left Behind is one of the highest rated experiences on App Lab with nearly a five star rating. This is Episode 1. It is broken into five chapters and only Chapter 1 is free, but to unlock all four other chapters, all you have to pay one time is $2. But you can try out the first chapter completely free. It is a cinematic experience where you are playing a drone in a post-apocalyptic world trying to help Luna, this girl, escape and stay safe. And it uses voice recognition. You actually talk to this character. You make different choices in this that will make the game play out in different ways. We had the developer recently on the, our podcast and interviewed them and they said they were really trying to make something in VR similar to like a Telltale's Walking Dead kind of game. Ratings for this game are really good and the only reviews that I could find that were any lower were because the game sometimes glitches. The developer assured us this month they were getting patches out to fix those glitches. And I will say personally, this is one of the few VR experiences that made me get really emotional B football super player. This is part of B football's metaverse that they're building around games and sports. But this one is set up all around soccer or football, depending on what part of the world you're in. I don't know if any of you remember Headmaster on PSVR, but there's a header mode in this game that reminds me of that where you are deflecting soccer balls with your actual head to get points and then other ones where you're a goalie. And it honestly looks a lot like a Beat Saber, but with so goalie gloves and a soccer ball. With about a 4.3 rating, but only 23 ratings, it doesn't look like this game has been well checked out yet. A high number of five star ratings though 79% people saying they can't wait for more it's really fun they just absolutely loved it and not a single person wrote a written review other than the people who wrote the ones for the five star reviews so we don't really know why anybody else gave it lower ratings that said if you go check this out I'd love to hear in the comments what you think about it and does it deserve this rating that it has meta horizon worlds if you haven't heard of it is basically meta's own version of rec room or VR chat with all different kinds of user created worlds different games that you can play in or just different social lobbies to hang out with. You can meet people from all over the world. Although recently they've started a creator program where creators who create worlds for them can actually make money off the worlds they create as people visit. It definitely still feels to me like it's behind where Rec Room or VR Chat currently are, but a lot of people are turning to it as they find lobbies more and more full of young people they don't want to spend their time with in the other popular social apps. Elixir is a free game that is meant to show off the hand tracking abilities of the Oculus Quest and the Quest 2. It is a short experience, although if you haven't gotten to experience much with hand tracking yet, it is probably one of the better showcases on the quest for it. The game drops you into a fantasy world as a sorcerer's apprentice, learning to help the sorcerer through all kinds of different tasks that you're going to need both of your hands 
options in hand tracking to do. This is one of the lower rated apps with a 3.5 rating, mostly due to its short length that people mention in the reviews. If you check out Ultimex, the minute you look at the trailer, you can tell this looks similar to like a Rocket League style game, but where you are in mechs. The mechs can zoom, they punch, and you are trying to knock a ball towards your opponent's goal. With 2v2 options or even 1v1, you're playing in much smaller teams than some other games of this style, but this game has a 4.2 rating with over 500 ratings. 65% of those are five-star ratings, saying it's very well done, it's easy to play, that it's a great game, but some people also citing that it takes too long to get into the lobbies. Some people saying it's just not fun, feels clunky. And more and more, as time has gone on, this game has been out longer and longer, people saying it just takes too long to find other people. With that said, you only need a few friends to fill up a lobby on this, so if you haven't checked out Ultimax, now might be the time. Meteoric VR is a game where controllers are optional. You are set above your planet and it is your job to defend it from meteors, UFOs, lasers, and all kinds of incoming objects. If you have the controllers in your hands, you're flicking out towards with the triggers, firing lasers out of your hands. But the best way to play this is with actual hand tracking. You're putting your palms up almost as if you're telling someone to stop and firing lasers out of your hands like Iron Man directly from your palms. There's different modes, missions, endless multiplayers coming. It's actually a lot of fun, but you end up feeling like you're kind of doing a weird workout game as a cat simulator because you end up going like this, almost like you're clawing on a scratching post or something. The game only has 15 ratings. It doesn't seem like it's very well known yet, but it is completely free and it's been out for over a year. 73% five star ratings. People saying they think it's worth paying for. It's the best hand tracking they found. It's great VR. And there's only 7% three star, no two stars, no one star. The only written review that is below a five star is someone who's using the controllers and saying they wish they had a better way to shoot the mirrors. So it seems like everyone is really enjoying this game. Fire Zone looks to be a very ambitious multiplayer shooter that puts you actually in a war with up to 16 people. Looking like something like Battlefield, but for VR. Talks about you have vehicles that you can play in. There are AI bots to add to fill out your roster. And although this only came out in December, it has over a four star rating with 82 ratings. People saying that recently though, it is pretty dead. People have either overlooked this game or forgotten that it's out, which means that if you have a lot of friends that have Quest 2s, this could be the perfect opportunity to get in and just play a multiplayer shooter with your friends, Project Demigod. Now keep in mind a couple things about this. This is considered a demo and it is in early access. This is a physics-based combat game where you have ragdoll enemies you're fighting and you can collect weapons, abilities to create your own combat style, including things like throwing your enemies up in the air, flying after them, throwing them through walls even. This game currently sits at about a 4.1 rating. 66% of those are five-star ratings with people saying it's amazing, it's really fun, really good. Other people giving it lower reviews saying that it's really buggy, that it's got a long ways to go before they would consider buying the full version or before it's released as a full version. And other people also citing in the mid reviews, it's a good game, but if you go for the full game, you're gonna get a lot more out of it. So keep that in mind. If you get addicted to this demo, it may end up costing you the game. Bright Light is a free game on Quest 2 meant to take you back and give you that nostalgia of playing with that toy. Basically, the toy was this big light board that you would put different colored pegs into to create your own patterns. And interestingly, when the original toy actually had these black sheets of paper that were templates for designs you could make, this actually has a couple templates in there. But really what you want to do with this, take your time, chill out, and just make drawings of whatever it is you want to with these different pegs, see them glow. Now this just came out three ratings so far, all at five stars. People saying fun, nostalgic, cute. And the person advertises it's in an interactive room and even has interactable objects around the room. But this one's interesting. Does anyone here actually remember this toy? Let me know in the comments. Brisk Square is currently in early access on App Lab and is free. This game looks very similar to Pistol Whip in that it propels you down a hallway and you fight enemies as they are propelled towards you. There's sword slashing, there's weapons, and even powers that have you push, pull, and crash objects with your other hand to collect points to reach the top of a worldwide leaderboard. This is an infinite run game, so it does go on forever down this cyberpunk hallway and you're trying to reach your way to the very top of the leaderboard. With 726 ratings, 84% of them are five stars, with mostly positive reviews of people saying the game is really cool, it's awesome, it's really fun, and some giving less stars because they said that it says that it doesn't require internet connection, but it apparently does to validate to the servers. Every VR headset needs to have some kind of roller coaster for those people who say VR could never affect them and you scare them with roller coasters. I don't always recommend that. But Epic Roller Coasters is a free roller coaster app, at least with the initial roller coasters that you get in it. When you open up the game, something important to note here is that you need to make sure it's going to be sorted potentially by featured or what's hot. You want to sort by what's unlocked so that you see which roller coasters you actually have access to. Otherwise, you might not even see them in the lists. There's a couple different modes. You can play a traditional roller coaster. There's a racing mode, which I really don't like. You're supposed to like designate the speed of the roller coaster without going flying off. But if you go flying off, 
it immediately cuts off your vision and doesn't let you see the roller coaster go flying or something. And then there's a shooter mode where you're shooting different targets around it. The game actually has a pretty low rating at about 3.4 stars, mostly because there's a lot of issues where people had paid originally for all future tracks and then they didn't continue to give them those free tracks later and are charging them for the newer track packs. That said, if you get this game and stick to the free tracks or be careful which tracks you buy specifically so that hopefully those will be future proof, this game can be a lot of fun. Although it does have comfort options, it really doesn't hold your hand and some people will definitely find the tracks nauseating. There's also a multiplayer function in this and you can actually see your own meta avatar you've made and people have given it great ratings there. They say there's great tracks and coasters, it's fun, but because of those multiplayer things, people say avoid the kids, avoid the issues with that. V Speedway is a VR single player racing game that has time attack modes, free ride, and single races. But what makes this game really unique in that it's racing, you actually use a working wheel, handbrake, shifter, and even rear view mirrors to see the other players. There are online leaderboards where you can go to to try and beat your friends. And this game has over a four star rating with 61% five star reviews. People, of course, in the reviews are saying needs to add multiplayer, people mentioning that they would like to be able to choose cars, and of course that this is just a great start. This is compatible with B Haptics, so if you're one of the few people that has a B Haptics vest, this would be one where you can race and feel those car wrecks. Don't Upset Bobby is a puzzle horror game where you are tasked with three different puzzles that you are trying to quickly finish before Bobby, the scary monster in the room, gets upset with you. Not a very well-known game, this has only got 17 ratings so far with about a 3.8 rating. People saying that it is really scary. It is really fun. And the only negative review that's left said it was too long to load. The vision you see of Bobby here reminds me of a terrifying Garfield Halloween special I saw as a very young child on some very old VHS tape that was in my house. This one looks like that would take me back to that. It might be a little scary. Slam has a five star rating with 92% of those ratings being five star and only one four star. This is a rhythm based tennis game. Think about Beat Saber, but you've got tennis balls coming at you and you're smacking up to the beat of the music. Music. People are saying it's really enjoyable, it's a new workout, it's fun and addicting. The only four star reviews citing that it should have multiplayer. As someone who loves rhythm games, this is a pretty cool idea. Republic VR is a truly unique VR game, actually from the developers of Metal Gear Solid and Halo. In this game, you play a hacker who is hacked into a nation's surveillance system and you are trying to assist Hope, a woman trapped inside, helping her escape. This explains why your view only goes from surveillance camera to surveillance camera while you are guiding her through and helping hack other computer systems to get you through. A stealth action game does have strong language. Its rating has been dragged down by the fact that it had a glitch in it that wasn't letting people finish the game. This has been patched and supposedly works. I know personally when I tried it while I was live streaming it, I had glitches that stopped me from getting further in the game too. The game originally cost $9 on Steam back then, but has now gone completely free on Quest and on Steam. Anyone who is a fan of stealth and action games, especially with puzzle elements, should definitely take the time to check this game out. Hyper Dash is another game that started at $20 and has now gone free to play. This VR multiplayer team-based shooter has about a 4.6 rating with nearly 2,000 ratings with all different kinds of game modes from payload, domination, capture the flag, elimination, and more. There's all kinds of different things to do and the game looks like it has a real eSports feel to it from the colors and the uniforms they've chosen. 80% of the ratings are five stars and it seems like the developer responds to every single one of them. Liminal is a unique gaming experience in VR in that it is a collection of all different kinds of experience. Meditations to fighting killer bots, different caves, and space exploration. Liminal claims that it's applying research by neuroscientists and psychologists that is meant to induce and augment emotional and cognitive states. Now this game has a four star rating and is rated for everyone, with some of the reviews dragging down that rating because there is many free experiences people say that you can try in this game and enjoy, but eventually if you run out of credits, you can't continue to earn them. You'd have to pay money to try some of the other experiences in it. The developer is responding that they are trying to find a way to balance that people can try more experiences without having to pay money at that point. But a lot of the reviews do cite that there is still tons to try out in the game without ever having to pay so that it might be worth it to try since it is free. Bait, a free to play fishing simulator. This is a multiplayer game where you can get with up to four of your friends, fish in the same pond together, hanging out, having fun. They've added multiple different locations that you can go fish since this game has come out. You even customize your reels, your rod, your bobbers, and you can actually play using your customized meta avatar if you taking the time to make one that really looks like you. This game has a four star rating and a higher number of one star ratings at 11%, often citing either now because it's free to play, 
lot of foul mouthed kids in the lobbies, more toxic community members out there, or some people saying the content has just rolled out too slowly for the game. Although recently they just added a virtual social hangout here for up to 12 people. You can even do other things like toss a beach ball around, skip stones. There's even some RC boat racing. Pavlov Shack is a VR multiplayer shooter. It is still considered to be in beta, yet it is completely free because of that. It is probably one of the most complete VR shooters you will find on the quest, let alone for free with all kinds of different game modes from capture the points, gun game, zombies. There's a predator style mode, the hide. This is a game that you could potentially spend hundreds or even thousands of hours if you find the right friend group and really have a fun time playing this with them. Of course, the fact that it is free, it is a VR online multiplayer shooter. You are risking running into some community members that may not be the kind you want to deal with. Of course, toxic communities. And that does reflect in the ratings, although the game still has a four and a half star rating because this game is well known, well loved, and it's still free for now, although they've claimed when it does go to the full story, it will cost. So that may mean the clock is running out on how much longer this one's free. Poker Stars VR is a free to play, basically casino simulator, allowing you to go in with your friends and play card games, hang out in these casino style settings. It is considered rated mature 17 and up only. This game was considered a very popular game for quite a while on the Quest 2 with over 17,000 ratings. I will say, disclaimer, from someone who's played this game, you really need to be someone who enjoys card games or enjoys that casino to actually enjoy this game. So I wouldn't recommend and try this unless you are into that. Gorilla Soccer Online is part of the Gorilla Sports Collection and still has a five star rating. Although there's only four ratings so far, they've all been perfect ratings. This describes itself as an interesting sports VR competitive game. And obviously you play as a gorilla. The locomotion is of course inspired by Gorilla Tag. You're running, jumping, knocking the soccer ball around with your hands. The only two reviews, one of them says it's fun and the other says mean because of the way the community had taken a dip, but then it says it got better again. But there really should be a report in mute button. What do you think of this game? You should leave a review because at this point that review is going to be pretty pivotal to its overall score. Waddle a Penguin's Tale was funded by the National Science Foundation. It's an educational VR experience, it claims, and it aims to provide you perspective on the challenges of everyday life of the Antarctic Adelie Penguin. This is a very short and very, it can be a cute experience. Definitely made simply and cheaply. You have to waddle, literally waddle, in your headset to move forward and it kind of jumps forward it doesn't move smoothly as it does which if you can get past that there is some fun weird little details in this you can go see the models of penguins you can play around with some of the environmental stuff and at the very end there's an egg your goal is to get there and make this egg hatch. It's only got two ratings so far at five stars, no written reviews. If you have a few minutes, you wanna be a penguin, go check this out. This is not like Penguin Paradise or other ones that are like real tech. This is like someone made a VR experience for their first time and you get to check out what the penguin world is like. And there is a little bit of charm to it. I'll leave that little bit of charm as a surprise to you if you do try it out, but it's definitely pretty janky. So it's it's something you be prepared. You're gonna have to work your way through it if you do try it out. Once you get tired of all the Gorilla Tag clones out there, reach shoulder health is actually an app made to help you rehabilitate those shoulders that you've been doing too much gorilla tag beat saber or any other vr in this is considered a health and fitness app currently has four stars but only one person has rated it so far and shows people using this to help exercise their shoulder and focus on their health it currently has one assessment experience and two games in it and even has a web-based portal to help you track your motion progress and provide you analysis this is still in development so they say keep an eye on it mini golf hustler gives you free nine holes of the full game to check it out with all kinds of wacky antics. This game is rated teen because there is some tobacco and you are using some gambling throughout the game. Currently, it's only got one rating, which is five stars, no description in the reviews. So keep in mind that one rating could even be from someone involved in the game, but it's definitely an interesting looking game with an interesting art style. They say that if you do decide to make in-app purchases, this is going to fund the future development of more holes and more opponents and multiplayer is coming. It's definitely something worth checking out. They have a discord if you also want to join that just to learn more about this one but i'm excited as mini golf so far has been one of the best case uses of vr for multiplayer hangouts that i've seen bullet master run is a game that pits you through a moving course where you are trying to shoot the enemies and not shoot the hostages now this game started out with one free level they have actually said they've added a second one now that you can check out and then you can choose to buy the rest of the game from there currently it's only got four ratings so far giving it about three stars and these are 
these are all pretty split down the board. One five, one four, one two, and one one. People saying that it's fun, but people saying that it's only one level. It's definitely something if you're interested in seeing what's new and free on the store, check this out and see what you think. The developer seems to respond to all of the reviews on it. It definitely gives me some vibes of like a time crisis, but in extremely early stages of development. So maybe there will be a future for this as it just came out. Punch Fit is a recent addition to the App Lab, only coming out on August 16th of 2022. From developer The Strippers, although that doesn't seem to have anything to do with the actual game, Punch Fit is another one that is focused on fitness and activity. They advertise having over 50 workouts. It's primarily a boxing game. This game, interestingly, only has 88% five-star ratings, but with 10% four-star and only 2% three-star, it does have an extremely high rating from the people who have played it. Kizuna AI Touch the Beat is a rhythm-based game based on Kizuna. So if you are a Kizuna fan or you even know who they are, this might interest you a little more. With a four-star rating, a lot of people are citing this as your typical rhythm game or a less good version of Beat Saber. Some of the reviews just getting straight up a little uh, creepy vibes. This is worth it for fans of it, not people who are trying to get in and get really close to some virtual character. Maybe that needs to be left to the uh, private rooms of VR chat. But this game is still rated E for everyone. It does eventually have purchase options where you can buy music packs that then will really up the price of this game. If you're looking at one of the music version packs, it's $35. But at least there's a free version to try out first and see if this is something that would interest you to then continue playing. Half and Half is another social VR game that has flown under the radar for a lot of people. There are multiplayer spaces where you can hang out with your friends and do all kinds of things from gliding through the clouds, swimming in the ocean, but probably the most exciting and well-known one is playing hide and seek with friends. You end up in a virtual environment where you are either a very tiny hider or a very large seeker with a slingshot trying to then find your friends who are hiding in these virtual spaces and catch them. With more balanced reviews and only 54% five-star reviews, a lot of the reviews are still positive and say it is a fun experience, but that the game can get tired, old, or the mini games are too easy. Rec Room VR is one of the most popular social apps on all VR headsets, especially the Quest. Rec Room is free and it cross plays between VR headsets, flat gaming consoles, and even phones. Rec Room is basically a miniature metaverse. There are social lobbies where you can hang out. People can build all kinds of different games, rooms, places to relax. There is probably millions of rooms by now on Rec Room, but there is also the core gameplay, which includes a Rec Royale, Battle Royale game, paintball, laser tag, all these different games that you can meet people in these social lobbies and then go play with them in actual games. BOGO is a VR pet that will actually scale to your room scale that you have built and allow you to take care of this little cute pet, even compared to a Tamagotchi for 2022 in one review. If you have any idea what a Tamagotchi is, I barely remember those. With a four 4.2 star rating, a lot of the reviews are extremely positive, saying it's very cute, they really like hanging out with BOGO, but some of the lower reviews citing that it's more of an experience, there's not enough interaction option with BOGO, but it's cute, it's free, if you are someone like me who likes the idea of a virtual pet but hates the games they die in, doesn't seem like there's too much risk of that with BOGO. Paranormal Inspector. This free game actually has one of the highest ratings of all the games, say at a 4.5 rating currently. This puts you in the game as Inspector Franklin, you are a rookie police detective and you're trying to figure out what happened at the state hospital where a team of student researchers have gone missing. This game is classified as an adventure horror game, but if you go look to the reviews, it sounds like it's a lot more horror than some people bargain for. People giving it 83% five-star ratings and only 8% one-star ratings. People saying they love it, but it's really challenging, it's really scary, the puzzles have some people stuck, and some of the less positive reviews saying that these are assets they've seen in other games or concepts they've seen in other games that they're not that interested in or that people found it confusing, weren't sure what to do. Manasaja Monastery caught my interest, although this may be more of an experience than a game. It caught my interest because the trailer shows off a person exploring around this real life monastery, but in a huge room using real life locomotion to walk around it and then also using teleport to explore further. Now this came out just a week ago and is considered a travel and exploration game and is available in both English and Serbian. It's only got two ratings of five and a four star so far with no actual reviews on it, but I'm always interested in things like this for VR that lets you do a little bit more traveling, see things more in real life, albeit with kind of low poly graphics on it. If you love Attack on Titan and Gorilla Tag, Attack on Monkey is trying to put the two together. This game has that typical Gorilla Tag locomotion style, but you are in the very small version of the Attack on Titan universe, basically. You start off with a knife
life in each hand and you can kill other monkeys who have bananas you can collect bananas yourself to help you grow bigger and bigger eventually becoming that titan yourself game's been out for about a month it has 10 ratings so far most of which are five star and one is one star only person who has actually written a review just says my monkey monkey i can tell you from going in this game briefly it's exactly what you'd expect the way the game plays you're bouncing around you're trying to kill other monkeys take their bananas and get bigger and the average age in the lobby is somewhere between 8 and 13 years old you might have played some of the world war tunes games previously in the past but now there is a tank arena vr version free on quest the game has been out for less than a month so far and i've got to say getting in this game the graphics because of the cartoon style it uses actually look really good and the tank controls work really well so far 48 ratings put it a little bit lower about a 3.7 some people saying it's fabulous the attempt is great other people saying there's been glitches where they haven't been able to get the game open so far when i tried i was able to get in easily jump right into the tutorial and then in a game checking it out if you're into world war tunes series or tank games this is definitely worth a try volleyball the title says it all it's volleyball but you're an egg this multiplayer volleyball game has you playing with your friends on this mysterious island that you can actually take your time to explore as well of course with typical volleyball moves you can actually spike serve and pass this ball over to your friends 117 ratings the game is somewhat well known with that number about a 3.8 rating though people saying they love it very good and other lower reviews saying it's terrible the npcs need fixing i will say one of them i think was quoting minions and just kept going over and over with the same quotes but if somehow you want to play volleyball as an egg i guess this is the way to do it gorilla royale is another gorilla tag type game but with guns guns and frying pans locomotion trying to shoot the other enemies this game has about a 3.7 rating 67 percent five stars 33 percent one star and no written reviews whatsoever to see what you think about it this just came out about two weeks ago and the release date although i know that there's been other builds of this that i have tried and done before long before this month so keep in mind their release date that they put on there may just be a different build of this between shields and guns and a rating of e for everyone this is something to check out if you've been playing a lot of grill attack it's getting a little stale but make sure you get some people to join you when you do because at least the last time i was in this there was not a lot of people in the lobby robotica in the title you wouldn't guess but it is another gorilla attack clone where you play as a robot instead this game just launched on app lab about two weeks ago although i believe this was available on side quest for a while now before that it currently has 10 ratings giving it about a 4.2 rating all of the written reviews are five star 80 percent of them the one and the two stars they didn't write anything to leave about it but people say it's good they love it it's robots basically just another version of gorilla tag to check out hordes is a vr wave shooter game that has you fighting witches goblins vampires and other scary monsters and it definitely has one of the lower ratings on the game list although many times they specify this is a game in development and lots more features are being added as it's developed you fight using magic wands and they've added newer melee modes that they advertise can even give you a workout with over 80 levels of vr horror monkey flippers is a game about a monkey trying to find its way back to its home with the parents and can't seem to find its way four star rating is made up of 65 percent five stars and 22 percent one star ratings people saying it's good people saying it's the best people saying it's not good because they wouldn't let them be a mod for the game although it's got a high percentage of one star reviews very few of them actually wrote anything so most of them are the higher ones but what do you think is monkey flippers worth your time to check out venta x describes itself as a 3d vr cinematic concert but there is something more than meets the eye here with 95 ratings giving this about a 4.7 star rating people said it's wonderful unforgettable amazing really neat but there are mentions of something kind of creepy in this too i don't want to spoil too much here beyond what you see in the trailer but it might be worth something checking out if you're someone who likes a little surprise and also wants to see what vr can do for concerts apple climbers is a hand-based locomotion game featuring nothing other than apples shows different modes like race exploring the help with your friends ice sliding bouncing and has a very similar aesthetic obviously to gorilla tag one of the higher rated with about a 4.2 rating and only 85 ratings five stars are 76 percent of the vote with only 12 percent at one star seems as though the game has a very small community from the reviews with some of them talking directly to the developer even by name and the developer responding but the game does have an official original soundtrack it says web guy is another free game to check out it's immediate when you look at this this is a game that's meant to be a spider-man simulator but unlike some of the others this is also a multiplayer game this game does have a lower rating at about a 3.5 although 46 percent of those are five stars 24 percent are one star some of the top reviews saying this game is really fun this is the spider-man they were looking for other lower reviews saying that there's bugs it's a short easy experience or citing some of the community 
identity toxic issues. That said, the game interestingly has a third person perspective camera just for content creators. So if you are looking for something to go mess around and pretend you're Spider-Man in, make a video about, this might be the one for you. Especially with the mechanic that you can even hang on to other players while you're playing the game. Might bring back some of those Spider-Man memes. <laughs> the traffic sign learning describes itself as a game under the category here, it says it's a game. Keep in mind, it is only in Turkish. So if you don't speak Turkish, or you don't know the road signs in Turkey, this may not be something for you to check out. Traffic sign learning is basically a game where you have traffic, different traffic signs coming at you and you have to choose the right one based on what they're saying to help you then learn traffic signs before you go actually driving. Based in a very simple looking city, it actually reminds me like some old PS2 graphics. Now, for those of you out there who are interested, it is Turkish now, but they said an English English version is coming soon. VR chat is the other and probably even more popular known social platform in virtual reality. VR chat is primarily a place to hang out and meet people, but people have designed rooms that are games that you can hang out in, murder mysteries, places to explore, and other fun things to do together in VR chat. There is so much that people have created in VR chat that it is something you can even go in solo, make private rooms, and just go check out all kinds of different things. There is places where you can go undersea diving. You can go fly a spaceship. There is so many different things to do in VR chat. Cat may be a game you've never heard of because one, it's really hard to search for a game named just cat. This is a cat in the hat horror game. Now, if you look at that, it, it really looks like a Slender Man clone style game. You're out in the woods, you are looking for six items and then you have to banish the cat back into its box. The more items you find, the faster the cat gets. Now with about a 4.5 rating, this one is mostly positive, 75% five stars and 16% four stars. With some of the lower reviews citing either it was too scary or not scary enough. It takes me back to the days of playing Slender Man on the iPad though just looking at this game. Polar Dread is a FNAF style fan game that puts you in a winter themed resort trying to escape a massive mechanical bear. Although in this one you can throw objects, fight back, or even throw some of the enemies themselves but you're closing doors, vents, and you're trying to let the clock strike six so that you can survive. 218 ratings give this a nearly five star rating. People say it's scary, people say it's really scary, and some people say it's not scary enough and give it a lower review score. Definitely a game that looks like a labor of love from a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, but something to check out if you're into the horror side of things. Undead Quest is a very recent addition to the Quest store and currently has a free demo version out that you can check out. The game is described as a fun single player arcade game where you're using a bat and a ball and some spells to fight against hordes of undead creatures. Looking like your typical wave shooter type game, this game pits you up against all kinds of different undead creatures, but it does have cutscenes that actually show off the plot of the game. It's got about 70% or 69% five star ratings, but that is of very few ratings so far, only 13 ratings, and the one star says it just wouldn't work on the original quest. The developer actually has contacted us personally, said this is a game in development with a lot more to come, so this might be one to keep an eye on. Penguin Paradise was a game one of you actually suggested in the comments. At first glance, this game has kind of blocky aesthetics, similar to Gorilla Tag, although this is more of a skiing type simulator and calls itself a multiplayer slip sliding adventure game for all ages. With a decent amount of five star ratings, 64%, there is still a lot of one star ratings too. Some of the lower ratings, of course, citing community members, toxic people there, and then other problems with glitches, people not getting their ice cubes that they earned. Fish Game was another game that was suggested to me in the comments to add to the free games list, so make sure if you have other free games you haven't seen on one list, let me know in the comments down below. Fish Game says, become fish with friends. <laughs> Basically looks like a simpler version of a rec room style game. You are walking around in multiplayer social lobbies, meeting new people, and you are even able to build in these lobbies and play mini games. Their top two mini games they mention are their original ones that they made. Swords, where you have three lads you're trying to kill all the other fish, and boats, where angry fishermen are trying to catch you with their fishing net. Now with 73% five star ratings and 16% one star ratings, the reviews definitely look like they may be marked by a lot of uh, younger reviews. One in the one star category says, it's really amazing fun, but they wanted to write a review down in the one stars for no reason, but the game is amazing and you should try it. But a lot of people saying the hand locomotion that this offers is one of the best. It's not a Gorilla Tag ripoff, people even say. Now forget Gorilla Tag, Human Tag. They say it is still in very early development. It uses the same Gorilla Tag style movement, but it gives you a little backstory here. You are a man named Kyle. Kyle lost his legs and has adapted to movement with his arms. 
arms. As you can see here, it's obviously a style of grill tag, but it's set more in like a human environment in a neighborhood with the flattest houses you've ever seen. With 12 ratings so far, it's at about a 4.3 with only a few one star ratings and the rest all five stars. <laughs> We've only got three actual written reviews here. Best game of life, amazing game should get, and so good all five star ratings. At first glance, Hybo might look like Fortnite or Pop 1 in VR, but this game is considered a competitive first person shooter VR game with a flying system that is incorporated into your bow that allows you to move around the map quickly trying to take down your enemies. With a lot of positive reviews, people saying this is a game you absolutely have to experience in VR. I've had it recommended multiple times in the comments section. It is currently undergoing some big changes that the company says you can follow and keep up on what's happening. Some of that has caused them to get some more negative reviews as things have changed. People haven't wanted to see the change or it's caused more glitches to happen. But with how many good reviews I've seen, reviews that had even changed their score when they saw why things were changing and how quickly the developer seems to respond to all of these reviews, this seems like a game with a lot of promise that might be worth spending some time in. Flying Squirrel Chase. At first glance, it looks like it's trying to be another Gorilla Tag clone, but it actually says that you flap your hands and spread your arms gracefully to soar like a bird. You can see people in the trailer here flying around and throwing around J-Man Curly's head for some reason inside of the game. The game's got about a four star rating with 377 ratings. 62% of those are five star with 16% of them coming in at one star. Enough people asking for moderator in the reviews, which I can say I've genuinely never seen on another game before, but people saying they like it. I would definitely be concerned about the community you might run into here because there's people leaving reviews on the game trying to argue with other people in their reviews even, which is kind of concerning. So the review score could definitely be swayed by this as well. Party pie, free pie. Now, this game seems a lot kind of like a Fall Guys in VR. Something that I want to bring up right off the bat here is this game is very mixed in the reviews with 52% five star, 19% one star. People saying that the game is extremely glitchy. It is very early for the game, but keep in mind, this could make you sick. This could be too much to even try to play. But for people who had it work right for them, they said they really loved it until something went wrong. The game advertised the demo currently includes four different modes. You've got apple pie, ghost shoot, fire survive, and banana pie. Between the environments and the character models, it does look fun. You can even customize your own characters. But if you're going into this, expect that you're going into an early access type of experience and it could be really rough. Monkey Runners has about a 4.2 rating. Monkey Runners, of course, looking like another Gorilla Tag clone, but with a bit of a smaller environment and the trailer even citing some issues that they had in development that left some holes in the game. People still are giving it a lot of really positive reviews saying that the moderators are good. They're usually in there keeping the community clean and fun. Other reviews, of course, that are lower saying that the moderators are the problem, having too much power, but 81% five star ratings and only 19% one star rating give this still a pretty decent rating. And nearly all the bad reviews seem to be because people got annoyed that they got kicked out by a moderator. Monkey's Place probably has the most cinematic and well done trailer of any of these clones here. This game, unlike some of them, also has in-game currency, but you get some every day just for coming in and joining. So you don't necessarily have to spend your own money to get the cosmetics if you save up. The game is another one landing at a 4.2 rating with 72% five stars. A lot of people saying that it's a really fun game. They met the owner. And even though people have given it some glitches, a lot of them are still giving it that five star rating. All of the lowest one star reviews citing glitches or losing all of your items after an update, all the cosmetics that they had saved up for. And of course that can be very frustrating if you saved up or if you actually were doing some in-game purchases to get those cosmetics. At this point, we might be just falling into meme land, but Cheese Balls actually has a four star rating with 15 ratings. Run, climb, and be a cheese ball in cheese balls with multiplayer, a mirror, and some banging music. They care so much about the music that the top review says, please add an on and off button for the music. The developer responded simply, no. <laughs> the developer is trolling a bit and it's kind of funny. 60% five star ratings and 13% one star ratings. Very few written reviews, most of which are somewhat positive. Four out of five, five out of five so hot. And people even trying to talk directly to the dev in the review section. Have any of you out there even heard of Cheese Balls? I'd be interested to know if anyone had heard of it or played it before. The Monkey Games actually has some of the coolest looking graphical style of the clones. I really think that the way they saturated 
it looks kind of nice, but we're down in about a 3.7 territory with 136 ratings. One says, fix your game. Old review, how do I get in casual? The other, being a five star, says it's a good game, but they really want a horror mode to be added to it. The developer did directly respond and said they have a Discord and with their email address there. I do think I like the looks of this game, the different environments, the snow, the sand and stuff that they've done here. But have you ever tried out the monkey games? I'd love to know in the comments, was it worth your time? Now with Penguin Rush, we're trading in gorillas for being penguins. This has a lot of different things to do actually in this one, between sliding on the ice, racing, rock climbing. There's even a backroom style map and you can throw snowballs at each other. You're looking at about a 3.7 rating with 94 ratings, 51% five star, but you got some fours and threes helping that score stay up before the 22% one stars. Reviews being dragged down by people saying the servers are dead, no one's in there anymore, it's laggy and having glitches. Mouse Runners is probably one of the most well-known ones on this list with 286 ratings, but about a 3.6 rating, which is a rough rating. You'll recognize a lot of familiar environments though, as you see the crystal caves, the back rooms, and your mouse bouncing around on between cheese and obstacles. Different environments to play on, but this is definitely one I would caution anybody on, as a lot of people have said in the reviews that if you try to buy anything in the game to buy the cosmetics, you don't end up getting the points or you, they just end up taking your money. People even saying it's a scam, in-app purchases scams, you'll get banned, which is giving it a lot of one star ratings at 28% one star ratings. Monkey Mischief is a game I actually tried back when it was still working and it got better ratings back then, but now it has 2,300 ratings with about a 3.3 rating. It's got the forest, the cave, creepy horror maps with AI. It's now down to 46% five star and 31% one star ratings. For people who can still even get the app open, they say it puts them in a black hole and they're just stuck there now. There is supposed to be another release coming up of this game, but I think this would have actually made it higher on the list if it had still been working for a while because I did have some fun in this back in the day. Panda Playground is a free multiplayer game like Gorilla Tag, but there's a twist. You're a panda. Dear God. There's more. No. You may enjoy parkour climbing trees and bamboo and play with friends. 28 ratings on its way down to three stars. Game sucks. Glitched. I hate this game. Gorilla Tag we've talked about a lot of times before. It is a game where you are a gorilla with only hands, no legs, but you use your controllers as those gorilla fists. You pound the ground and those physics in the game will then push you up off the ground. You learn to push yourself around using only your hands, bounce around, climb up walls, and ultimately try to tag your friends and win the game. This game is used for a lot more now than just that. There are people that hang out in it, use it like a social app, and maybe people who put their kids in it just to let them grow up somewhere where they don't have to deal with them. There you have it. That's a hundred free games on the Quest 2, all free and able to be played at the time that we made this video. I know this was a really long video. This is a culmination of a lot of months of checking out free games and collecting them all, telling you about them. For those of you who watched all the way to the end of this, the few of you who did, I'll leave a little surprise here for you. Comment this the phrase, I made it to the end. Post that comment, but then hit the, th the thumbs down so that it'll actually push it to the bottom of the comments list. I want to kind of hide that this is happening. Those people who say that, I've got some extra Oculus credit right now, so I'll pick some random names out of there after a few days as I see a bunch of the comments that have made it to the bottom from there and reach out to you and buy people some random games out of my credit. But thank you so much for being here for this long one for the 40,000 subscribers now and I will see you in another reality.